What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Eric Three the Second. It's time to get this money. Eight of the 15 Tri-Valley Conference girls teams are still alive in the postseason. The boys are getting started tomorrow, and one of the bucket getters of MacArthur is in the building to discuss the journey ahead. So stay tuned for Episode 7 of Hardwood Heroes. You win or you watch. How bad, is, how bad does your team want to advance? I enjoy being a watcher. I can feel the passion from the players, the coaches, the communities. You see the Waterford fans going nuts, Fed Hawk fans going nuts. You saw players like Audrey Blake getting on the court, getting hyped. And both Lady Lancers and the Lady Wildcats are sectional champions. So let's look at the brackets as of Friday. Fed Hawk led after every quarter and eliminated Sims Valley, but the Lady Lancers have to deal with a one loss Notre Dame team next week. The Lady Wildcats continue their conference dominance and escort the Lady Tomcats out of the playoffs. They have Fairfield on Saturday. The Wellston Lady Rockets got blown out Wednesday while the Lady Buckeyes are beginning their championship journey. The Lady Spartans have been number one all year, so dealing with the pressures of their seed should be no problem. We have one girls team left in Division II. The Lady Vikings fell to Fairfield Union. Athens lost in the final seconds, which leaves Megs as the sole TBC team in this division. Now, Division 4 for the boys is TBC heavy. The Miller Falcons earn a bye. They look to get back to scoring in volume against Sims Valley. And Trimble will either face Belfry or South Gallia for the third time this year. Eastern enters as the favorite for a change and will face TBC Hawking champion Waterford if they win. And the Lancers, their record doesn't matter now. If they manage to win their first game, they'll see Southern in the next round. It's been a disappointing season for NY as well, but the postseason is a fresh start. Wellston managed to pick up a few games in the TBC. Are they gonna upset South Point? There will be at least one TBC victor in Division Three, and it'll come from Alexander and River Valley. Now, Athens or Griffin Lutz and the Dogs, whatever you prefer, they have to deal with one of the MVL's best in the Sheridan Generals, and Megs looks to spoil Fairfield Union's dominant season. Now the best TVC team, the Vinton County Vikings, they look to emerge from the crowd with no blemishes. The only team in this division to beat them is Miami Trace and they are in a different section than they are. The Nelsonville York Lady Buckeyes are riding the momentum of Jesse Addis' 1,000th career point. I'm joined by NY reporters Thomas Garvert and Jerry Curvin. They're on the side set. Let's talk about some of the postseason chances, Tom and Jerry. Eric, the Buckeyes want to play a little game of cat and mouse if they want to knock off top dog Eastern Brown. Lady Warriors averaged 61 points per game and scored a season-high 96 points in their latest win. It will be important for Jesse Adams to control the tempo on offense to prevent this game from turning into a shootout, Jerry. Well said, Tommy G. But while tempo and sharp shooting are key, defense always wins championships. And NY has locked down the TBC all season long. Along only 38 points a game, I'm telling you, if they can break that press, they will break that 14-game winning streak. But Jerry, if the Buckeyes want to pull off this upset, they're going to need a little magic on their side. So my magic number is 20. The Lady Buckeyes can get 20 plus points from Cameron Dugler, Mary Kate McCullough, and Sam Taylor. That could be the deciding factor in this game because Addis can't be a one-woman wrecking crew. Magic definitely would be a useful tool for the girls, but I'm sure the Lady Bucks will be ready for war Monday night. On the flip side though, I'm not even sure magic could help out the boys. They're going to need a miracle. Yeah, for now, the boys will continue to be pretenders until they figure out how to win games in the TVC. And things didn't change Friday night, did they, Jerry? Well, no. Tommy, the Buckeyes' terrible TVC campaign was capped off with a 75-47 Athens beatdown on Friday night. Now, this rivalry goes back all the way to 1920. Maybe that's why Griffin Lutz put it on him so bad yesterday. He finished with 23 points, 6 assists, and 4 steals. Tommy, it's been a long year for a team who has such a fast start. There are reasons, though, to be optimistic if you're a Buckeye fan. Junior Ronnie Wynn and sophomores Ethan Boyer and Justin Perry have really come on late in the year. It's time for seniors Hunter Edwards and Aaron Davis to hand off the keys to their supporting cast who have the ability to lead this program going forward. That supporting cast does look bright, and they will be needed this postseason, especially if they want to take out first seat Dawson Bryant on Monday. But Eric, make no mistake, the clock is ticking on a Buckeye turnaround. Yeah, the clock is ticking. If they lose, they go home. Hopefully they can play, hopefully for them they can play spoiler. Nice teamwork, Tom and Jerry. 
Now, the Mex Marauders have had more success than the Buckeyes this year. They played their last, they finished up the regular season against Athens and River Valley. And I'm here with Megs reporter Joe Hennessy. How did they keep it popping in Pomeroy, Joe? Well, Megs was able to beat Athens at their place last Saturday, 60 to 49. The Marauders then played uh, <clears throat> River Valley at their place and defeated them 61 to 50. It was a close game at the end of the first quarter, but at the half, Megs went into the locker room leading 31 to 20. They kept up their attack and led 51 to 30 at the end of the third. But the real story is that this was a chippy matchup. Meg's fans got ejected, River Valley fans got ejected. Eric, it was insane, but Meg's pulled away with a W. The passion, you, you see it everywhere. Now, it's no time for games. The Marauders are going up against an 18 and two, number two seed Fairfield Union in the first round. Let's see if they can keep the positive juices flowing. Now for the girls, they had a very nerve wracking matchup against Jackson. It was a tough battle until the very last minute. Fortunately for Megs, they left the gym with a 44-42 win over the Jackson Iron Ladies. It was a slow start for Megs. Well, actually, it was a slow game for Megs. In the first half, Jackson controlled the pace, causing turnovers and scoring buckets. They were making it hard for the Lady Marauders to claw back into this one. That was until the third quarter ended. Led by Cassidy Betzing, who finished with 20 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists, Megs put on their game face and realized it's playoff time. It's now or never. It wasn't easy by any means. Down by 9 to start the fourth, they fought back to take a 44-40 lead with just 6 seconds left. Fun fact, Megs only led in the first and last minutes of the game. They had ice in their veins when it mattered most. It was a battle from start to finish, but that's what, Eric's, but that's what playoffs are all about, Eric. One win, no losses, my man. Thank you, Henny. Now, our first Snapchat of the week comes from Brandon Simonetti. This picture came before Belpre's double overtime victory against South Gallia. But the Golden Eagles aren't done with the Rebels just yet. South Gallia gets another shot at Belpre in the first round of the postseason on Wednesday. And the postseason brings a lot of hype. The Eastern Lady Eagles are hyped. They're second seed in their conference, and the boys, they're trying to move on from their regular season struggles. I'm here with Eastern reporter Molly Kennedy. The boys, their season didn't end how they wanted it to. The Eagles had a decent end to their season, but it wasn't good enough, losing to Miller on senior night. Eastern came out strong, but fell flat in the second half. They slipped up in the end, losing 64-54, to another typical night for Eastern. This isn't the result they were looking for, but this is what we've seen all year. Exactly, Eric. Their season was subpar with mediocre team chemistry. During the season, however, senior Jet Facemeyer averaged over 20 points a game, scoring over 1,000 career points. Hopefully for them, the team will rise to the occasion as they take on Green High School this Tuesday. On the ladies, however, they're eyeing a state championship. How much credit would you give the coaching staff? Eric, it's a total 180 switch from guys to girls. Even having a new head coach didn't seem to affect the girls that much. Most of the girls are young, so transitioning from veteran coach John Burdett to young alumni Jacob Parker was very smooth. Coming into the season, you know, Coach Burdett had to, had everything lined out. It was a transition for them to get to know Jacob to coach. They really discovered, hey, you know what, he's here, he's invested into the program, and you could just see a relationship being, being built from there. You practice, you know, you play how you practice, and this community really backs its local sports. The biggest factor for us is just taking care of ourselves, you know, take care of the little things. You know, you set yourself up at the end of the day to win a basketball game. The Lady Eagles are able to handle tough teams both mentally and physically. They have been on their game all season, finishing 18 and three heading into the postseason. The Lady Eagles have a bright future in the coming years with coach Jacob Parker, but the guys will have to work just a little bit harder for the spotlight. You're definitely right about that. Thank you, Molly. Now at the end of every episode, Blake and I deliver our heroes of the week. But next week during the finale, it's all about the squad. We will reveal our all-hero team, the best of the TBC. They're all going to be on one team. So tweet at us, at Harwood Heroes. You can tweet at me as well, at Junior underscore three. Share your opinions on who should make this team. Now, there is a big pot of players to choose from. Maybe you'll choose this baller that's on desk with me, <laughs> Mr. Nayland Yates, player on Vinton County. How are you doing, sir? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Let's talk about the Vikings and okay. the, how dominant they are. TBC, Ohio champions. What makes you guys so tough? I think it's our relationship we built with each other. You know, we played, uh, most of the guys on our team have played since third grade together, so our relationship is great. We're best friends, so, you know, we're just used to playing together, so. What do you guys do off the court with each other to keep you guys um, so tight? Most of the time we're at Bryce Dameron's house or at Tristan's, you know. Um, 
but we're always getting into something, you know, always, always hanging out. We're always together. So. Now, what does it mean to you when you can't step up and knock down shots or you're having an off night to have a Tristan Bartow, a little brother that can step up for you? That's what, that's what makes it so great, you know. We have so many guys that can play, so I'm not having a good night. Just, just like kind of like last night against mm -hmm. Wilson, Derek Jones comes up and plays big and Tristan Bartow, so, Definitely. you know, a great senior night for that, but that, that just shows us how good we can be because of all oh, the players. Oh, yeah, and y'all's number one seed reflects that. Are you guys, what are you guys' goals? How does a state championship sound to you? That's, that's the goal. I mean, that's, that's always the goal. First TVC championship, then sectionals, districts, regionals, and then we're just going to keep building. But, you know, state, the state, that's the, big, that's the main goal. Now, so, what would that mean to you and your community? I'll be everything. You know, we, everyone talks about it, but, you know, this is the year to do it. You know, we, we've... My man. We put, we put in the work to do it, so we just got to make it happen in the tournament. Yeah, and it's been fun watching y'all. Thank you for joining me Thank on you. Yes, Sir. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Now, last week, online host Blake Baker broke down some of the top girls teams in the TVC. Now it's the boys' turn. Reporter Joseph Payton is here with his outlook on some of the teams. You know, Eric, we're getting into the latter part of February. Okay. Teams are finishing up their regular season, and now the boys have their sectional tournament draw. So let's talk about the Division Four Meg sectional here, Waterford. With their 13-3 record when they went into the tournament draw last Sunday, they're your one seed. This sectional is predominantly TVC Hawking teams. There's three teams that aren't, though. Sims Valley and Green out of the SOC in Scioto County. Then you have St. Joe, who is independent. But let's talk a little bit more about Waterford, who was your one seed in that sectional. This is how they stack up with the rest of the Hawking on average. Waterford, 15-4 total overall record. 14-0 in conference, perfect right there. But the rest of the Hawking, just 7-13 overall and 6-8 in conference records. Like I said, Waterford has been totally dominant this year. Head and shoulders is the best team in that conference. They will start their tournament run against Eastern or Green. It depends on who wins that game, and that'll be held on February 28th. That's when they get their tournament gig started. Let's move on. Let's talk about Division II. Vinton County, arguably one of the best teams in our coverage right here. They're 17-1. and They got the one seed, and they will play the winner of Marietta and New Lex to start their tournament. Now, let's move on. This is my dark horse team. I think Athens is a very good team. If Griffin Lutz gets hot, you never know what could happen. They'll play, uh, they will play Sheridan to start things out. That's the four. It's the five, four game. But uh, you never know what can happen in these tournaments, man. These two teams wouldn't see each other if they both won the district championship until the regional tournament. So, Eric, like I said, you never know what's going to happen at the combo. I'm excited to get this started. It's going to be interesting. Hey, I'm with you on that, Joey P. It should be very interesting to see who watches and see who wins. Thanks for the great work. Now, Hardware Heroes will have a video recap of every postseason game we go to. You can check it out on our YouTube page at WOUB PBS. We have a lot of information about you and your teams, so study up. We've already seen four TVC teams get knocked out by their rival. Prepare to win. Look at our videos on our YouTube page. Now seasons are shutting down and teams are beginning to send off their seniors. Blake is here to talk with me about these seniors. Blake, look at you, you got a haircut. Your hair is looking on fleek today, my man. I did get some hairs cut. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> uh, I guess you could say this is an altered look. So it made me think about how some of our teams are gonna alter their look for next season with this one at its end. Some teams will be losing a lot, so let's look at them first. Easily, Vinton County's boys are going to be losing the most. One of the reasons they've been so dominant is because they're so experienced. 13 of their 15 players are upperclassmen, and seven of those are seniors. Uh, and they talked about the unbelievable chemistry that Naylin just talked about with us. Oh, yeah. You see Tristan, the, the one game that I went to against Athens, he dropped 37 effortlessly. Having multiple guys that can do that, that's why they're so dangerous. Yeah, they've been that way all year long, and they're certainly going to miss some of those seniors. Now, another team that's going to be losing a lot, Fed Hawk girls. Six out of their 11 girls are seniors. And it's not just the fact that they're seniors. They're the heart and soul of this team. They've engineered an unbelievable turnaround from just a season ago. Probably the most notable Destiny Tabler. She got her 1,000 point this year. She's been a star on that team for multiple years now. And it's going to be tough trying to replace the scoring that she delivers. Absolutely. And don't forget about the Southern boys. They're, set, they're losing seven of their 11 guys. Uh, Tyler Blevins and Blake Johnson have certainly made a name for themselves. A great one-two punch. And Waterford. Their senior class has really done it all across the board, all different sports. Guys like Isaac Huffman, Jordan Wells, Andrew Thyman, those guys are certainly going to be missed. Oh, yeah, and you can tell through their team chemistry as well. That's why they went undefeated in their conference. Now, most of these teams have had experience or has had success all year with their experience. Now about now they have some challenges. Now let's talk about some of the teams who have a lot of returning players like Athens. Yeah, Athens had a rough year, no doubt, but there is a silver lining. 
They started four sophomores and a freshman, so they're going to get all five of their starters back. And the youth on their team really allowed for them to exper or experiment with those roles, and each girl found the perfect role for them, especially Laura Mandrick, who became a star scorer for them throughout the year. We saw four freshmen start and a sophomore. And if they continue to practice together and build that chemistry, they're going to be just fine. Yep, saw the role players and then bringing Mandrick back. That's definitely good for them. And another team that competed in the TBC Ohio with the youth they had was the Meg's Lady Marauders. They have a slew of sophomore stars led by Cassidy Betzing. And even though they're losing their top two rebounders, they're bringing the top five scorers back next year. And that, and they competed in the TBC Ohio this year. Only I, I can only imagine what they're going to do in the years to come. Absolutely. And don't forget about Waterford, of course. They're only losing one senior in Jillian McCushion, who's been a good contributor for them, but they're going to be getting their best contributors back. So not every season, not every team's season is over. So this is a little premature for some of the teams. But it's always fun for us to look ahead and get ready for what we can expect next season, Eric. Definitely. It's always journalists, they we get in trouble speculating, but it's, it's it never hurts to look ahead. Thank you, Blake. Now, the Trimble Tomcats are looking to get back into the regional championship. Trimble reporters Paul Rock and Rebecca Markovitz break down Trimble's week for me. Well, Eric, the boys were able to leave the week unscathed with two wins, and the girls picked up a hard-fought playoff win over St. Joseph before falling to Waterford in the second round. That's right, Paul. The boys' first game against Wahama was a close matchup, while their game against Federal Hawking was a blowout. The game against Wahama was a back-and-forth affair as the game featured 18 lead changes, 16 of which came in the first half alone. Wahama jumped out to a small first quarter lead. Their offense was kept alive through offensive rebounds, fast breaks, and three-pointers. Uh, Trimble was able to keep it close through the second quarter, playing their offense through the duo of Randy Hickson and Tyler Slack. The Tomcats took a one-point lead in the halftime after a nearly full-court buzzer beater by Max Hooper. The game took a turn from there. Midway into the third quarter, the Tomcats pulled away and carried that momentum into the fourth quarter, shutting down any of Bahamas' last-minute efforts to get the 76-68 victory. And on Friday, the Tomcats were able to discard Federal Hawking and confirm the Lancers' winless season with a 67-25 victory. Now, the Lady Tomcats had a quality win in their first round matchup against St. Joseph, uh, one that Coach Richards was extremely proud of. And that, was, uh, that was one of our biggest wins I think we've had here in two years. So the girls, I mean, it, we were really proud. Found their group early, limiting their turnovers and dominating offensively and defensively. Their tough interior defense forced the Flyers to shoot outside shots that they just weren't able to make. And that tough Lady Tomcat defense was able to limit the Flyers to only two fourth quarter points. Offensively, Trimble was able to run set plays, which helped ease the team into the flow of the game and play more effectively. Speaking of effectiveness, Emily Ward. The senior nearly had a double-double with 8 points and 12 rebounds. Her play led Trimble to the 37-26 to lead. But the celebration wouldn't last long for the Lady Tomcats as they advanced to take on the number one seed Waterford Lady Wildcats, who trounced them 51-24, to thus ending the girls' season. Even though the girls' season is over, the boys look to finish their season strong against Southern before heading to the playoffs as the second seed. That's a must. Thank you, guys. Now, the Lady Lancers didn't finish the regular season strong, but they had an opportunity to start the postseason off strong. Fed Hawk reporter Taylor Bruck slides on desk with me to discuss the Lady Lancers. The Lady Lancers haven't won a playoff game since 2009, Eric, and they took advantage of their chance against Sims Valley on Thursday. Fed Hawk started off slow, though. They were sloppy with the ball and committed turnovers, which could have been linked to, the, to nerves as it was their first game of the postseason. At the beginning of the second quarter, Fedok made a run and were lights out from the three-point three range. Players like Destiny Tabler and Hannah Dunphy were 6 of 12 from the three-point line combined. At the end of the first half, the Lady Lancers were up by eight points, and after the third, they were only up by one. The Lady Lancers lost momentum, only shooting two for 12 in the third quarter. But down the stretch, Fedok picked up the intensity on defense, forcing Sims Valley to shoot bad shots. The Lady Lancers went on to win 52 to 44, picking up their first playoff win. A huge game. Now, the boys lost their last regular season game. Are there any positives to take to the postseason? The Lancers struggled against Trimble on Friday, falling to the Tomcats 67 to 25. They continued to have issues taking care of the ball and did not rebound well. But never say never, Eric. Fedhawk plays St. Joe on February 22nd, and St. Joe has a pretty even record, so it depends on how the Flyers perform. Fedok is going to have to come ready to play with fire in their eyes and get full effort throughout the whole game. The Lancers have improved tremendously throughout the season, as you know, Eric, and you can tell they are not giving up yet. Coach Vernon is playing more bench players, and if this continues, the Lancers might have more stamina to finish the game strong and get that first win. Now, if they do lose, they will be the first winless team in Harwood's history. So let's see if they can handle their business. Thank you, Taylor. 
Now, Fedhawk wasn't the only team to become sectional champions. The Waterford Wildcats, they thrive in the playoffs. Waterford reporter Nick Mullins joins me on the desk to talk about the Waterford boys and girls and how they're number one seats. Eric, both these teams had a dominant regular season, but the Lady Wildcats ended their regular season on a sour note, however. They lost to Division Three Minford Falcons 64-37 Monday night. Allie Kern had a subpar night with only six points, but they looked to get ready in, and get into form going into these playoffs. After a first round bye, Waterford took on eight seed Trimble Thursday night. Waterford walked away from Megs with a 51-40-24 win over the Tomcats. Waterford had no offensive problems in this one. Allie Kern was dominant after a lackluster performance with, against Minford, but she posted 15 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 steals. Two steals away from a triple-double. They had it going offensively all night, but defensive side, they were just as good. They created 25 turnovers for Trimble. And Julian McCutcheon even was able to get into the net cutting despite being injured most of the season. Now, Waterford will be up against Fairfield on February 25th to defend, or another game to defend, their state championship. But the boys are tough, too. They both finished the season with a flawless conference record. They kept that flawless record, record Eric. They defeated Eastern 63-50 to on Thursday, Thursday night as they went into senior nights. Jordan Welch was the odd man out of the starting lineup. Despite coming off the bench, he led the Wildcats with 24 points, 10 rebounds. It was a back and forth game, but Waterford offensively was too much. Blake Johnson was the leading the way for Southern in this one. Waterford would take home another win as they defeated Belpre Friday night, 81 to 41. They had another great offensive night as they shot 33 for 55, and Bryce Hil Hilverding had 20 points, and Jordan Welch added 18 once again. Waterford basketball, whether it's the boys or girls, it's just going to be fun to watch this postseason. All eyes are on the Wildcats. Thank you, Nick. Now, the Lady Spartans are another team that everyone has their eyes on. Alexander was the first team to clinch a TBC championship. I'm joined by Alexander reporters Maggie Shandrick and Taylor Pacelli. What do these two teams need to do, or what do they need to focus on entering the postseason? The girls finished the regular season with a 19-3 overall record and went undefeated in the conference, winning the TVC Ohio like you just said, Eric. I wouldn't underestimate this team by any means during the playoffs. They received a bye the first round and breezed through the second round, defeating the Westfall Mustangs. They will travel to Waverly High School next Saturday and will play the winner of Minford and South Point in the quarterfinals. In order for Alexander to make a deep run, senior Leah Richardson needs to come out ready to play every game. She has led this team for four years now and knows how to create a strong offense the Lady Spartans will need throughout the playoffs. Yeah, Maggie, but everyone has to step up. Each player brings a valuable part to the team that, need is, that is needed for them to be successful. The boys, on the other hand, finished their last regular season game with the 55-29 win against Southeastern on Tuesday, finishing with the record of 11-10. They honored four seniors who played their last game in the alley. But Taylor, that record means nothing now. It's playoff time for them too. The Spartans drew the River Valley Raiders to play in the first round of the tournament on Monday at 8 o'clock at Jackson High School. This is a team the Spartans already faced two times this year, winning both matchups. On January 10th, the Spartans outlasted the Raiders by 30 points in a 68-38 victory. And on January 31st, it was a closer game. The Spartans won by 13 points, making the final score 45-32. And after a run to the semifinals last season, the Spartans are looking to do that again this year. Chase Harris will need to bring his A game and lead this team in the playoffs, something he has done all season. Yeah, Maggie. Coach Kern said in order to be successful in the postseason, the team will have to move better away from the ball and deliver passes when players are open in order to be effective on offense. Movement and spacing makes scoring a lot easier. Both teams are capable of making a deep run. Great work, ladies. Now, the boys are the only team that's still alive in Athens. The Bulldogs have a four seed in OHSAA's playoff bracket. Athens reporter Nick Ursini is on desk with me to talk about what's happening in the Plains. What's better than playoff basketball, Eric? Nothing. <laughs> the intensity rises, crowds get more wild, and the players leave it all on the court. The boys come into the postseason with a ton of momentum and are poised to make a deep run in the tournament. The boys might have dropped their previous two games, but they got back on track in a big way against the Nelsonville York Buckeyes on senior night. Griffin Lutz, Brody Ball, and Trey Martin were all honored pregame as they all contributed to Athens' big 75-47 win. Athens came out of the gate with a full court press, resulting in 10 first half turnovers for the Buckeyes. Athens capitalized on those turnovers with transition buckets and wide open jump shots. Griffin Lutz, as he's done all season, led the Bulldogs with 23 points, 6 assists, and 4 steals. 
Logan Maxfield had 13 points and three, three, three rebounds, and Justin Hines had 11 points and five boards. Athens was only up eight at halftime, but outscored the Buckeyes 23 to five in the third quarter. Plus, the Bulldogs went to the line 26 times and made 19 of them. This one gives them a ton of momentum before facing off against Sheridan on Friday. Sheridan is no joke. They are second place in their conference. Now, the Bulldogs got to be ready. Let's talk about the girls. Their season came to an abrupt end. What happened in their loss against Galley Academy? The Lady Bulldogs, they had their hearts ripped out against Galley Academy as they hit a layup with three seconds left to lift them to a 57-56 victory. The game started out looking like a blowout. Galia scored 15 straight points to start the game, and it took Athens six minutes to score their first point. Athens came out on fire in the second half. Their intensity reached an all-time high, which resulted in tenacious defense and a five-point lead going into the locker room. Galia regained the lead thanks to a 16-5 run to end the third quarter, giving them a 42-40 lead. After a back-and-forth fourth quarter, Olive Harder drained a three-pointer right at the top of the key to give the Lady Bulldogs a 56-55 lead. However, Athens could not stop a well-executed inbounds pass to a wide-open Janelle Stevens, who laid it in off the glass to save Gallia's season and absolutely crush the hearts of the Lady Bulldogs. Now let's talk about the, the final five seconds. Take me through that final play. So the final five seconds, um, you know, inbound pass, they're un Gallia was under their own hoop. Mm -hmm. um, there was just one defender. Athens was getting killed on the block uh, down low on glass because Gallia was just so much bigger than them. And, you know, well-designed play, little pick. Janelle Stevens comes around, comes down, wide open layup, and the faithful at Athens, man, they were they were heartbroken. But they're a young team, four freshman starters, one sophomore. It's just hard to see the Lady Bulldogs lose like this. But something tells me they're going to be determined and be back and better than ever. Oh, they'll for sure be ready to go, Eric. Tuesday, not even 24 hours removed, they had a shoot around. Trust me, they only had four wins this season. Next season, they will for sure double, if not triple, their wins for next season. Hey, bold predictions. There's nothing wrong with that. But, as always, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you, sir. Now, Griffin Lutz is always eligible to be a hero, but he is not my hero of the week. Blake is back. What's up, man? What do you got for hero of the week this week? Well, it's no surprise. Waterford is no stranger to postseason success, and Allie Kern is no stranger to stuffing the stat sheet. The junior, has, the junior has been the wild, Lady Wildcats' go-to girl all season long, and she's really vamping up her game when it matters most. Kern flirted with a triple-double in a win over Trimble Thursday night. She dropped 15 points, nabbed 10 boards, and pickpocketed the Tomcats eight different times. Her defensive presence is what makes her so special. She can take an opponent's best out of the game every game. She's just a stellar athlete. She's just what the doctor ordered if Waterford wants to make yet another run at a state title. And there's so many girls on that team who could be Hero of the Week. So many teams or so many players that step up on that team, and that's why they're so dominant. So I'm a state or I'm gonna stay in Waterford. My hero of the week is Jordan Welsh. This hero is long overdue. Welsh and Waterford, they've been consistent all year. He had a double double in Waterford senior night Tuesday against Southern. 24 points, 10 boards off the bench, a pure score, uses his body well in the paint while having great finesse around the rim. He also shares the sugar, he keeps his eyes up and feeds his teammates. This is his final year, and I know he and his senior leaders on that Waterford team, they're going to be energized, focused, and ready to get that state championship. Yeah, Waterford's sweeping our uh, weekly hardware. How about that? that I'll, is that the first time we've done that this year? I don't know. It might be. I mean, they're both number one seeds in their brackets. They definitely earned it. How honorable of Jordan Welch, too, to sit the start of the game on senior night to get some of his other seniors in there. A longtime starter, how noble of him. And it, it shows with their great team chemistry. Yeah. All the time. But it's time to shut it down. Keep up with all of our content at wob.org slash heroes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Harwood Heroes. You can follow your boy as well at Junior underscore three. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Eric Freak II, reminding you to be heroic.